Oh my gosh, ah, super cool. Here is gonna be the final upgrade video with a little final touches here on the ANET A8 DIY printer. As you can see, we've got some LED lights in right there. We also have the same LED lights over here. The difference is we have uh, some electrical tape on it right there. Um, that's of course to help us block it out when we're watching some TV. I uh, did get a nice little fix for this. You can actually add a dimmer if you decide to add lights to your printer. There's probably a smaller dimmer than this one, but you simply just have to add the power in right there, and then of course put the dimmer on the out, and then you can control the actual light brightness, right? You know, yeah, so you can actually, you know, control that a little bit more. So that's uh, definitely an upgrade that I'm going to add to this printer right here so I can control that brightness, but that, uh, that light has been a great add-on for this little printer because not only do I have this little camera back on there with the Pi, but this allows me to always get really good uh, lighting with those time lapses. So I don't have to worry about keeping a spe special light on specific for this printer. It's just always looking good. So there you go. There you have one of the, the cool upgrades is that light right there. And not only that, but we have a few other little upgrades. I added Skynet to the printer. So Skynet, as you guys know, is something that allows you to uh, put on a 3D level, uh, or a, a, an auto bed leveler, and uh, I actually decided with my printer that I'm not going to do it. And the reason is, is because this printer just does not seem to need it for me. Every single time I print with it, it seems to be just right where I want it to be. So I have no reason to put an auto bed leveler on here, uh, unless I ever started seeing a reason to do so. So, and, and plus of course it's faster if it doesn't have to do that each time, it just starts right on and just starts printing right away. Um, here's the most recent print that I just did, and I've done several of these guys in a row. If you are uh, buying stuff on the Pro VR Gear store and you're lucky enough to get one of these guys, these are kind of a, a little special guy, so you better feel excited about that. Okay, there you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, another one of the upgrades that I'm going to be doing to all these printers. Okay, so if you're interested in adding LED lights to your printer, it's actually not very difficult. You can buy these strip LED lights just like this, and it comes with like a 3M tape on the back, and you can just kind of pull these out as long as you want them to be. They've got these little cut marks all along there, so what you do is you just cut it along one of those cut marks. Once you do that, I've got the little baggie of these guys, and what I can do is I can just open this guy up, literally just open it up right. I just push, just put it right in there just like that, and then you'll just close this, once you just close that piece right there, you've got these two wires, a negative and a positive. You plug this into, the, of course, the power unit, or over here on the board, you've got the power input over there. So you've got a, a few different spots where you can put it in. Um, or, of course, if you're using a dimmer like this, you're going to want to hook it up directly over here to this piece right there. And that will allow you to turn it on and off, you know, as far as your brightness level. This is really, really kind of a, a must-have, I think, now that I've added it for my 3D printer. The ability to be able to see your 3D print as it's happening, especially that first layer just to make sure that it's happening properly is really kind of key. So having LED lights on your printer is just really, really nice and, and it's very, very, very simple to do. This is one of the simpler things that I've done with my printer, so don't be scared of that. Um, another one of the upgrades that I'm going to be doing to each of these printers is I've got some heat sinks here. Um, not This printer not specifically, but my other printer definitely. When I run them for long periods of time, the motors get very, very hot. So adding an extra heat sink on top of that step motor I think is going to be really key in actually helping it 
in, in its longevity and staying, a staying around for a long period of time. So the heat sinks look a little bit like this, and I'm going to go ahead and put those heat sinks on right now as well. Okay, and for these specific motors, there is of course enough room on bottom to put these heat sinks underneath them. The difference, or the reason I don't want to do that is because these motors have somewhat of a, well actually we'll go ahead and spin it and show you. These motors have a hole on the back, so that hole on the back I actually want to keep it open and clear, so I don't want to block that off with some adhesive tape and a heat sink because I think that's, rather than keeping it cooler, I'm actually going to make it hotter by preventing any air. So I'm going to put the heat sinks on the sides of the step motors because if you've ever felt one of these motors when they get really, really hot, the sides of them are extremely hot. So um, I think that that's still going to help out in keeping it cool. And I've, of course, read other people's posts where they've said they've done similar things and they said it did indeed make their motors a lot cooler than they were without those heat sinks. So I'm going to go ahead and add those right now. I've actually got one of them on there. That most definitely looks pretty cool on there. Not only is it uh, cool looking, but of course it is going to hopefully keep them cooler and like I said, last a little bit longer. And uh, before we finish putting the last two ones on there, um, I've got one to put on right here and of course one to put on that back motor right back here. I do want to of course show this printer. We, uh, we just had some, some pieces finish over here. We've also got these guys, the same ones I'm going to be putting on this printer as well. This motor right now, I can actually feel it. It is very, very warm. Like, I can't hold it any longer than that. It's so warm. So, uh, like, that one gets extremely hot. And I know the motor on the back end of this printer as well, this is the Taz 6, it also gets really, really hot. So, uh, I know that putting these guys on here, you know, for example, will really, really, really help out the printer overall. And it looks like we've got some of these... Uh, Looks like they're little brackets that are done over there. So we've got some black ones and some white ones. You guys aren't sure what these guys are. Let me show you what these things do. Of course, if you're into virtual reality, these guys are the little sensor top. So you can put your little sensor bracket into the top right there, and then you can just put this on the wall, and it can you know point down, and you can all of a sudden have a little you know wall sensor bracket. It's pretty cool. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the other brackets on the other spot over here. <laughs> Final upgrade is finished for me on this printer. I am uh, going to go ahead and call this guy, like I said, finished for, for my own purposes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what happens when I turn it off here. And the lights go out. Of course, when I turn it back on, we see up here it says, Hey, Skynet by RCVR. Hey, hey. We can actually add those kind of things in there. All right, and once it gets set up, we can go over here into the settings, go into prepare, and click on auto home. Ooh, ooh. And I've actually got this guy set to go right in the middle of the board. Um, when I first set up Skynet, he was actually auto-homing more kind of in the back over here. So to get it in the center of the board, I had to actually change some of the numbers to make them exact to get it to, to do exactly this. I will show you exactly what those numbers were. Also, when I start the print, when he was starting to print, he was printing somewhere up here. He wasn't printing directly in the middle, so I also changed some of the beginning numbers to get him to print in the center. I will also show you those numbers as well if you're curious about that. So when I have him going to home, he actually auto-homes right there. When he's done with the print, he does auto-home over here at the corner when he's done with that. So I will, uh, like I said, show you guys those settings on the computer right now, and then uh, we'll take care of that. Okay, so the basic steps of getting your printer ready to update to Skynet is uh, very simple to do. I actually went over it a few days ago, so I'll go ahead and show that video right now. Okay, so the first thing I did was I downloaded Arduino 1.6.3, and then I opened up that. Once I opened up that, I actually have the file right here, which is the Skynet 3D version 1.1 alpha, of course. I uh, will just simply go over here to the Skynet file and open up the Skynet 3D version 1.1 alpha.ino. Once you open that up, you're gonna see it right here. And uh, basically, let me go ahead and move this over to the other side. Um, once you see your files right here, you can actually just uh, upload this into your firmware. Uh, but first, you need to make sure you've got a few settings pr uh, proper. So go into your tools and make sure the board is actually set down here to ANET 1.0. And then go to port. Make sure it actually has a port available. If it's plugged into your printer, it should show a port right there. Mine is the only one available right there, COM6. You also want to make sure your programmer is set right here to the second one down, the uh, MK2 and then you're going to be set. So uh, the first thing I want to do here is just show you some quick configuration settings that actually made my printer work. So uh, if you jump here at the top, uh, the first thing you can do is go control F to find, type in homing. If you type that in, the first thing you're gonna see is that one, second one, okay. 
the second homing, I apologize, the second homing that you'll see right here is travel limits after homing. So when it says travel limits after homing, you're going to see these values right here. And mine, are, mine have already been changed. Um, right here, basically, where it says minimum position and minimum position for X and Y, those positions right there are going to determine where it's going to auto level on the bed. So if you actually, so if you upgrade your firmware and you notice that the actual position is not centered in your home, you can actually get your little millimeter ruler out and, and configure it properly. So I think originally it was, mine was negative 33 and then also negative something else, uh, which made mine completely off into the corner. So I just started moving the numbers a little bit until I figured what it was and I'll show you right here actually. Um, you can see on my printer right here, this little red dot is where it was originally homing in at home. And now it actually homes right where it's supposed to, right in the center, right there where you see it. And for my settings, for me to get that perfect center on my printer, it was actually right here. 220, negative 15, 220, 40, 230, 0. So um, and these other numbers you're used to seeing, 220, 220, that's your build plate size. And 230, that's your size of how high it can go, right? And of course you could put it up to 240, but we're just gonna do a safety zone and keep it at 230 right there. If you wanna change the name on here, you can actually just go in here to uh, find, and then you can hit name. And right here where it says custom name, you can sit, simply uh, just type what you want right here. Initially it says SCOW, S-C-O-U. I changed mine to RCVR, hey, Reality Check VR. So um, once you save that, you can simply just hit that upload button. Once you hit the upload button, you're gonna see it down here, say it's uploading. When it's done, it will say uploading done as it does right there. And then you're going to be able to, you know, tell your printer to home and, and, and watch it do what it's supposed to do, which is, you know, go, go to home. So if I, you know, go over here. And of course, those were the extra settings that I did to make sure it went level just where you actually you see it right now. Um, and that's just going to make it just stop right there in the center spot. Uh, I also did have to add a few other things to it, so I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so here we are in Cura, and you can actually see if I go into the start and end G code, I'm going to go over here to the start G code. Right here it says G28 X negative 38 Y negative 7 E 3000. Without this, it does not print in the center of my bed. So not only did I have to add the other center, that's where it, you know, home's center, but for it to actually start, when it starts center, I had to actually add this code right here. And some other people on the internet show some videos with different numbers. For me, with my ANET A8, this was the setting that had to get it just right to get it to print in the right spot for me. So, you know, having said that, we're gonna go ahead and start our last print of the day. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just show it just like this. Okay, so here we have our little octopus with the virtual reality headset on. We've sent him over here to Octoprint, and that is on the Raspberry Pi that's on the side of the printer over there. And with that, we can actually see now, with, with those beautiful LEDs behind it, we can see the nice camera lit, lit up, you know, so we don't have to worry about any of that, you know, falling away from us. So once we're here, we can actually just watch the print in progress, or of course, we can see the temperature right now. It looks like the bed has just about gotten to temperature. Its target is 60 degrees. It's at 53.5, 53.6. And once that gets up to 60 degrees, we're gonna see the actual uh, nozzle start to heat up. And at that point, we're gonna see the whole thing start to engage. So let's go ahead and wait till then. All right, it's getting to temperature. It's gonna start going right now. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so it looks like it's going pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video for now. We'll see you guys in the next video. I really appreciate you guys checking this stuff out. If you uh, wanna check back later, I will be doing an unboxing there. I've got a, a box there to, to uh, open up later when I get some more time, and I can't wait to do that. If you guys do like the channel, please uh, check out uh, the Patreon link in there. You can be a supporter. I do send out free things, and uh, of course, I uh, try to keep in touch with those people as much as possible. So uh, I, I really do thank you guys for checking out the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.